Good morning. You know what? I don't know where to start. Oh, yes, I do. Is there anybody in the audience here who thinks that I'm a shy person? No, you're laughing at Sniggery. You don't think I am. Well, I'm not. But I have to tell you that I was one time. Many years ago, uh, you, you tend to, to have milestones in your mind, don't you, of things that you've done. And in terms of the shy department, I remember one particular time walking up Main Street with my girlfriend of five days, or was it eight? I was uh, 12 or 13. And she stopped in front of uh, the cathedral uh, with a group of friends, girls. And uh, they started chatting away, and I was quiet there, listening. And at some stage, one of them turned to me and said, Itokomotoyama, what's your name? And at that moment, I felt a volcano coming up to my, to my face, blushing, really boiling hot. I mean, if there had been selfies in those days, you would have taken a picture of, of, of a human body with a tomato, I'm sure. And I just managed to get it out, Richard Cartwright. Okay, como? Richard Cartwright. That continued, because then I started uh, singing with Albert Hammond, as many of you may know, uh, rehearsing in his flat in Willis's Road, the upper town, for those that don't know, though, that's Rod Calpe. And I, I lived uh, by the uh, uh, clock tower, Lower, Lower Castle Road. And from there, I would walk up to his flat, just a couple of back streets, that's all, um, up to his flat, and uh, very, very shy, walking up with a guitar in my hand. Give it a winter, give it a winter. Walking all the way there and back. It continued when we went professional. One of the times that we went to Madrid, Albert and I, um, being invited to parties, and I would will those parties to be cancelled. In fact, I remember one in particular that I willed to be cancelled, and it was. <sighs> but we were managed by a guy called Emilio Santa Maria, who was Marcial's father. She wasn't famous then. This was the mid 60s. She was famous in 1968 with Eurovision, la 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 la. Remember that one? In the mid 60s, and Karina was also a, a, an artist of uh, Mr. Santa Maria, Miguel Rios, Lotenete, and a few others, and us, Albert and Richard. One day we went to the cinema, can you believe? Me with Karina and him with Marcelo, who was still a student. And again, I, I, I can't imagine how I spent two hours there in that cinema with this uh, lady chatting, or did I chat? I don't think so. Not very much. We became professional, and I emphasize the word professional. And when you leave a town or a city like Gibraltar or Dusseldorf or Lyon in France, Madrid, London, you go away and you're successful, in inverted commas, and that means that they know that you're performing somewhere, you're, that's your, your living now, you're professional, and you've appeared on TV, as we did on, on uh, radio and TV in both England and Spain, and uh, you make records, so they think that that's it. And of course, that's not the case. We can't all be Rod Stewart's and Michael Caine's. So what happens is that you start taking uh, jobs in your downtime periods. I worked in a, a list of jobs. Cleaning houses, working in, in uh, uh, restaurants, in the kitchens. I also did uh, working in, a, uh, what's it called, a, uh, jewelers in, in Oxford Street. Got a job in Selfridges, never turned up for that one. But I was at the main office, the head office of BHS. Uh, Whiteley's when it was a department store, not as it is now, uh, an arcade. And then we moved on to a place called High Street Kensington, where there's uh, three big stores. I'm not quite sure if they're still there. Barker's, Derry and Tom's, and the other one called Ponting's. A number of Gibraltarians were working in the area, and what we'd do is, uh, after the work, we'd cross over and go to the pub called The Crown. There we'd congregate, have a drink or two, have a chat. They chatted more than me, because I must uh, highlight at this point that I'm a Gemini. I don't follow these star sign things, but I understand that Geminis are people who are, who are dual personalities. At first, I thought it was dual-faced, docara, which I didn't like. I, I'm not like that. Dual personalities, absolutely. Sometimes quiet, quite reserved. Other times, less quiet, more unreserved. And those that know me know that that's the case. So uh, we took on these jobs and, and, and crossed the road, had drinks, and uh, the girls, English girls from, from the shops would go over as well, chat to the boys, especially hearing them speak in, uh, in, in Janito, a bit of Spanish, a bit of English. And there was one lady that came towards me after a few days and started chatting to me. And then I heard later that she'd done that because she saw me as a challenge. <gasps> well, that was my wife. I've been with her now for 50 years. And let me tell you that we've been challenging each other ever since. So we're still working, Albert and I working, doing restaurants, uh, working men's clubs in the north of England. And at some stage, in one of our trips from Madrid to Jib and back, he'd met a girl, Pamela. 
So he was so much in love, he left England, left London, came back to Jib, and decided to uh, chase her, and in fact he married her, had a family as well. In the meantime, Los Cinco Ricardo, the Cincos, Los Cincos, were working in, they, they were doing quite well, recording and, and playing in top hotels in London, in the Grosvenor House Hotel they were at the time, and the singer had to leave. So they asked me if I'd like to join them. I'll give it a try. So I took my guitar, sang for the, for the, for the manager, this guy said to, to Joel and Betty, I'd been singing for six or seven years professionally for most of those years, has this guy ever sung in his life before? That's what he said. I'll tell you the reason for that. The reason for that was because all those years that I've been singing with Albert, I never heard my voice on its own, always doing the top harmony for the, all the Everly Brothers songs that we used to sing and all these things. So what happened was that every time there was a part that was a, for a solo, solo verse, he'd do it. He never asked me if I wanted to do a, 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 what's it, but, a, a, a verse, but equally, I never suggested it either with my laid back, relaxed uh, uh, um, attitude that I had and still have, I think. So that was the reason for that. Never heard my voice like that. So I did this audition, didn't work, uh, so we joined. Albert and, Albert, Albert and Richard joined forces with Los Cinco Ricardo. So now we're in a group. We did carried on doing the, the, the what's it called, the, uh, the, the two-part harmonies and, and Everly Brothers songs and the rest of it. But of course, he fancied the business of singing on his own. So as we were in a group, he could do that, you know? Uh, he, You'd have the group here, Albert here. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Hey, Richard, on the Richard, aquí al lado, down this side, con el pandero. <laughs> Which was fine, was absolutely fine, because I go back and we sing two or three more songs in harmony. But he liked that, you see. He got to like it, singing on his own. So then there was two songs that he, that he sung on his own, and three and four. Y yo con el pandero, the tambourine, for those that don't know what the tambourine is, the tambourine man, if you like, you know, and that went on and on and on and on. Albert being what he is, he always wrote songs uh, it, it, since he was in Jib, and he was songwriting with uh, Mike Hazelwood, who he later had hits with. Uh, the, the group was uh, uh, producing another single, another record was coming out for the group, but he recorded a song with this guy as well. So he had to choose, can't sign two contracts, who are you going to go with? So he went with them. Lo and behold, the group is left without a singer again, because I can't sing, apparently. It was all co coincided right about the same time. They, the group came over for our holiday. I was already with Terry, and Justine, I think, was born by then. Or was she? No, she wasn't. Uh, th they came over. Yes, they were. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. They came over, and whilst they were here in Jib, they were scouting for another singer to take back with them. As it happened, they didn't find one. They didn't want no, the ones they asked didn't want to go. So when they went back, in the meantime, Terry, being what she is, determined and not taking no for an answer and not a get up and go person, not so much now. Um, she got me some singing lessons, voice training, and that. So I went for a few few flu lessons. We couldn't afford them really, but we did four or five. But it it it, it instilled in me what I needed. I mean, the, the singing was there in in the background all the time. It's just that it just needed to come out. So when did the you know. Da 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 then sustaining the notes, then singing the little tune. And it built up my confidence somewhat. So when the boys came back without a singer, I said, look, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. And so I did. Slowly but surely, slowly but surely, I got better. Got better. Metamorphosis began. I came out of the cocoon. Me salí del cascarón came out of my shell, slowly but surely developing that fantastic, incredible personality that's in front of you today. You know, that's how it is. So we carried on, carried on, carried on. Some of you may remember us playing in the Pigal in the, uh, the Pigal nightclub in the casino, Europa Road, and uh, the other thing, the Japanese gardens we used to do, the, what's it called as well, the um, Galpe, Galpe at Christmas. So that was then. We went back to England, performed uh, in the hotel, the Royal Lancaster Hotel this time around. Ended up in Jersey, the la last contract. We didn't know it was the last thing for me anyway. Uh, we were there for, for a year. About halfway through, my daughter Claire was born, who was blind and had other problems as well. So towards the end of that contract, we were thinking again, of course, not forgetting that we had that downtime period when there's no work. 
What do we do now? Justin and Marvin were born by then, so we had Claire with her disabilities. Going over to London, you're going to have to go back to the north, stay with your parents whilst I wait till the next contract comes by and we have to look for a flat. Look, we're going to go back to Jib, which is what I did. Came back to Jib, I already planned to, to sing with a band here, so I carried on singing with the band, but also I arrived at 12.30 lunchtime on a Saturday, first thing Monday morning, picked up the phone and called Henry Ramaje, who was the uh, manager, general manager at GBC at the time, and said, look, I'm back in Jib for good, I want to do something. The rest, I suppose, is history. I started with my part-time work on GBC for a number of years, seven years, I think, and at Rich's Rendezvous on a Sunday afternoon, did TV as well during my part-time days, until parity of wages came to Jib, and I got a full-time job in 1979. Through those years up to the present, hundreds and thousands of interviews, I've done loads of series of programs and solo programs. I suppose I would highlight City Talk as one of my best ones for me, uh, Two's Company, and of course Talk About Town. That's the one I want to highlight because it's been running for 11, 12 years, uh, no longer of course, it ended last year. And um, the reason for that program was that one day, Michael Featham, Danny's father, was up at GBC ready to do an interview. He was walking down the corridors with, uh, with Clive Galt, and they were chatting in Janito, as we do. Go in the studio, do the interview in English, come back out, and carry on with Janito. Not rocket science, but it was like an epiphany. Wait a minute, the guy in Sky News speaks in English all the time does his program in English, comes out, speaks to his wife in English, the guy in Antena Tres and Canada sing in Canadian TV, CBC, uh, whatever, they speak in one language. Why can't I speak in the language that I speak and that we all speak? So that's how Talk About Town was born, right? So, now I'm coming to the end of my bit, and this is very important. Pero que serio va por la calle? Have you heard that about me? I'm sorry, inside I feel quite normal. I'm sorry, I apologize for the facade, the glum look, walking down the street. Invariably, somebody says, especially the women, you get all that sort of thing. There's another woman that, that I speak to that talked to me about this, and always when she approaches me, goes like this. It's amazing. Amazing, really is. But the highlight of this, uh, this particular one of misperceptions, you get loads of them. Another guy that says, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I've always been a Gemini, reserved and quiet and serio por la calle, how could I have been más simpatico ante? I've always been the same. Maybe I am very simpatico, but not with a facade when I get chatting. So wh why are you saying that? Of course, he's saying it because he's thinking of me on TV, and I don't do TV so much these days. So he says, era más simpático ante. He told me about three or four occasions, and I stopped him. Well, what do you mean? No, porque tú entras aquí. Going on. But the highlight of this one is meeting up with uh, Susan Serrulla of the Serrulla perfumery uh, uh, fame. Um, he, she was walking with her mother, uh, Frances Serrulla, wife of Solomon, they both passed now. Richard, ven, ven, momento, ven. I cross over. And she says, Mira, mom, it tells el, el muchacho que te gusta a ti que, que during Christmas, the open day, hace el, el viejo este que te, te ríe tu tanto. I'm going to tell you one thing. You know that one, no? There was a pause. She looked at me, looked at Susan, did a triple take, never mind a double take. No. She's from the north of Spain, so speaks with a Castilian accent. Pero este no es el señor que le las noticias. Sí, ma'am, sí, el mismo Richard Cartwright, que le la noticia y hace programa ese y muchos programas más, el del viejo y eso. No, no, no puede ser, no puede ser. A perfect misperception of, of what one is. No? In the end, she got chatting and, uh, you know, she came to the conclusion that looking at my face and hearing me speak, that it was me. And that's, that's, that's how it is in terms of uh, perceptions. I mean, plenty of actors and, 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 and performers are like that. They're very quiet, uh, quiet on, uh, you know, in, in private. Uh, you get the old guy that says, Mira, tú en New York tres tre semanas con el wife. Y, y, y entré en un restaurante y estaba eh, eh, Johnny Depp. Estaba en un rincón, el tío con un champa normal. Y con, con, con una mujer mayor, sería la mujer o, o, o la, no la mujer, la, la, la madre o la tía. Y el tío después, y as he was coming out, and, and, and se sonrió, le dije hello, y empezó a hablar. Escúchame, 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 compa. El tío, igual que tú, igual que tú y yo, normal, ¿eh? 
excuse me? Did you expect him to be in his pirate gear just coming in from the Caribbean? <laughs> it's, it's a perception that just doesn't click, misunderstanding of all that sort of thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a great audience. Thank you for listening.